that we're going to talk about today. My name's Leslie Mitchell and I'm from Renaissance Bath and Body. So you may have got into soap making and primarily today I'm talking about melt and pour where you take your soap base, you melt it, you add some colours and fragrances, you pour it into a mould, you let it set and it's good to go straight away. And I seem to have a lot of confusion and a lot of difficult questions coming my way about what is a dye and what is a pigment and when do I use each one in different processes. So I'm, I'm being really careful not to shake these because I want to show you how they settle as well. So let's begin with a dye. Okay, let's hold that up. So I, can you see that one? Maybe there, yeah. So it's this is an, an orange dye. You'll notice if you look at it that it's, it's fairly, um, fairly consistent with the colouring the whole way through. Notice how there's no settling in the bottom of that whatsoever and um, you don't really need to shake it. Nothing's going to make any difference if you do shake it. So this is a dye. Now the pros and cons of a dye is most dyes will colour migrate, they'll bleed. So your dyes are absolutely perfect for liquid soaps because you need them to go through and you don't want them to settle. You notice uh, there's really absolutely no settling whatsoever dye and this one is the orange dye. I picked the same colour with all of them so that you would be able to see consistency within them. So all you need to do with your liquid soaps is add a couple of drops, give a little shake and you've got your colour through your liquid soaps. But if you use that in your melt and pour, let's say you did white and orange, so two layered pour, then after a little while it'll start to migrate through. It can give a really interesting ombre effect and sometimes you might want to use the dyes within your soap making just to give that effect but it will bleed and it will migrate and it will fade under certain circumstances. Um, I think red fades in the sunlight and blue fades in the moonlight or the other way around but they fade under different circumstances so you're not going to get consistency with your melt and pour soaps in using a dye. Now with Renaissance Bath and Body we label whether they're dyes or pigments and we tell you on the website but a lot of your other suppliers won't say that. They'll just say soap colouring. Or they might be calling a pigment a dye or a dye a pigment and you don't really know. So you need to ask them, is it a dye or is it a pigment? Then we move into our actual pigment. So here is an orange pigment. If I tip it carefully, I'm holding the fluoro one so it doesn't move, you'll see there's a little bit of settling going on down the bottom a little bit so you can just see a little line down the bottom. So in order to use this I'm going to need to shake it quite vigorously and then it blends, uh, it blends through and then I can put that directly into, uh, I'll move it over there for you, directly into my melt or soap base. Now a pigment is colour stable, it won't bleed, it won't it won't migrate, it won't move. If you make a soap that's white and orange, it will stay white and orange. It's also uh, fairly colour consistent. It doesn't fade easily. So for melt and pour soaps, I always use pigments. Then I have another one here to show you, and I'm just being a bit careful with it because it's settled, and I want to show you how it's, how it's settled. So can you see that line down the bottom? This is a fluoro orange pigment, so see how, see how down the bottom you can see that line across it, it's settled quite a lot. Um, our fluoro pigments do settle quite easily, but they're really, really simple to disperse again. A couple of shakes and if you take a look it's all blended through and, uh, and it's a lovely colour to use. So essentially there's really no difference between your orange pigment and your fluoro orange except they'll give I don't even know if you can pick it up on the camera, let me come in from the sides of them, um, maybe different. Yeah, the camera isn't picking it up too much, but in, in real life there's actually quite a difference in the colour between the fluoro and the orange. The fluoro is a little bit brighter. They're both pigments, so I use both of these when I'm doing uh, mountain ball soap making, and they're both colour stable and they're both going to uh, be non-migrating or non-bleeding. Um, so if you find when you've got your pigment it's got that settle, don't worry about it, that's the powder in it. Just give it a really, really good shake. If you get to the bottom of your pigment and you find there's some sort of sludge in the bottom, don't waste it. That's good stuff and that's what you want to keep. But don't use tap water because you can introduce bacteria into your pigment. So get a distilled water or a really well purified water. Add a little bit in to that sludge. 
stir it up with a, a skewer if you have to. Give it a really, really good shake, and you'll get a little bit more out of your pigment. So every time you use a pigment, give it a really good shake. If you get left with some, use it up, and uh, and you'll get a little bit more out of it. They're really, really good value. You're only going to use a drop or two. And the other thing that's great with your pigments is you can use them to colour uh, rock salt, Epsom salt. So if you want to colour up your bathing crystals, you can use these for that. If you want to make bath bombs, these are perfect. Um, a lot of your body products. You can't use them in candles because they have a water base, so it's not going to blend with the wax. You'll need a powder, um, a powder pigment, and it needs to be a candle-safe powder pigment. But for your soap making, um, these particular pigments are perfect. We have them available in powder form, and we also have them available in liquid form from your 30ml bottles right up to a 1 litre bottle, which makes them really economical. When you purchase your first kit, and, and at the moment I think there's about 18 different colours and that's still growing, it can be a little bit expensive when you first buy your kit because you have to buy them all. But once you've got them, you're really only going to use a trip or two and they've got these really handy uh, little caps on the top, like a little eyedropper. So you don't waste it when it comes out and also you don't introduce bacteria and germs into your, uh, into your pigment so it stays clean and sterile as well. So in summary, pigments for your mountain pour and dyes for your liquid soaps. I hope that clarifies. And uh, I'm from I'm Leslie Mitchell from Renaissance Bath and Body or renaissancebathbody.com.au. Click like and subscribe if you'd like some more topics like this. And I'll be bringing you some tutorials and a whole lot of information coming your way. Thanks for listening.